What's up, you guys? Sean Rossap, Fightful here with the name. You know, we've talked to him a couple of times. We've talked to him to promote ROH. We've talked to him to promote Terminus. Now we're here to talk Modern Age Grappling, May 22nd, 6 p.m. at the Underground Fight Factory in Hampton, Georgia. You can check it out on Fight as well. We got Jonathan Gresham, the ROH champion. How's it going, man? Ah, it's going pretty good, man. I just had a full day. Now I'm talking to you, so... Uh, pretty good, pretty good. Thank you. Not, not just a full day, a full like several months. Like I've, I think I've interviewed you three times in like maybe the last six or seven months, and it has yeah. been categorically different parts of your career. We're talking like towards the end of ROH, and you told me at that moment, which uh, I incredibly respected. You go, I'm gonna see this ROH thing through. I'm gonna see what happens. I'm gonna see how it works. Um, I'm sure that had to feel a little bit unnerving and it may be intimidating at times. Now, as you sit here, how do you feel about that decision to see it through with ROH? Um, like I, I speak about this a lot, but it, it's, it's real. It's not a character thing. Uh, I, I literally have this, this voice, I call it my, my conscience that speaks to me, um, very clearly. And, uh, a lot of guys were panicking, contacting different places, trying to jump ship and uh, something told me, you know, you came this far, like you made it to Ring of Honor, which was like, you just never thought it would be something that you could do. It was like, just see it through, man. Uh, that's the least you could do. This is your dream. You're at the point you, where you want it to be. Just see it through. Don't do anything else to the Ring of Honor. And it's exactly what I wanted to do. Fast forward to now, like, it, I think it was the right decision. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it seems like it. I mean, you're, you're at Super Card of Honor. You unified those ROH titles. That had to feel really good for you because you – not only kept the Ring of Honor name in front of people, you pushed it in front of people during that hiatus. You were defending your championship all over the place. And I know that you had to get like a little bit of approval to do that. Well, now, mm -hmm. how have things changed for you personally? Because you're, you're the undisputed ROH champion. ROH has changed ownership uh, since then. And not only that, you're running multiple independent promotions on your own. Well, not on your own. I guess Baron helps you here and uh, here and there. I guess, <laughs> but I mean, so much has just changed in the last few months for you. Yeah. Um, so, clip notes here is just pretty much I uh, I find out that I'm losing my job. Terminus is already in the works. Um, so Baron and I are funding term Terminus ourselves. Mm -hmm. So um, I lose my job. So. I start to panic. I think like naturally anybody would. Um, so I turn back to the only thing I know, which is going to the Indies. Um, so I discussed a lot of, um, you know, options with like progress and WXW and they came through to give me work, which is really nice of them. I've worked with them for, for years now. So um, I'm on the Indies working for those guys, uh, just trying to keep my normal life afloat. Um, and so Terminus kind of went on the back burner because of course I needed to save what I was making just for my personal life. Uh, take care of things um and fast forward uh tony khan purchases ring of honor and uh now we're here ring of honors uh i guess on its way back i um, looking forward to that um and a lot of my comrades and my friends are going to get their jobs back hopefully so um i don't know things just took like a huge turn in a, in a good direction for me and uh now that i'm i'm more confident in ring of honor coming back i can start looking at uh you know taking myself off to Indies a little bit more and concentrating on uh, Terminus uh, and Modern Age Grappling. Yeah. I assume Terminus wasn't around because Baron Black hadn't been to the pay window yet in AEW. Like, <laughs> see, he didn't get that winner's purse at all. I mean, you, st uh, you stepped in and immediately beat his win total. How does that feel? <laughs> oh, man. Um, I don't know. I think he's, I think he's taking it. I think he's taking it pretty good, man. He always, uh, he's, He's challenging me. I tell you that he wants to. He wants me to wrestle him on AEW Dark. Uh, so maybe that's going to happen soon. Right. I think AEW is coming to Atlanta soon. So maybe that's something that's going to happen. Who knows? Well, something um, that's coming to Hampton, Georgia, is Modern Age Grappling. So we've seen Terminus, which is like you and Baron. We've seen Baron's promotion as well, which which was a hit. I love the live stream on on Fight this past week. Now you got Modern Age Grappling, and we're talking like yourself. Baron, uh, Brian Johnston, uh, Colt Cabana, Rhett Titus, Josh Woods, Will Ferrara. A lot of those people that you mentioned that lost their jobs, like they're, they're working here at Modern Age Grappling. 
what motivated you to do this instead of running a Terminus show in, like, right here? So, uh, for a long time, I wanted to run shows, and I had this this visual, this, this, this way of running shows that I, I wanted to do, and uh, when it came time to do it, I ended up teaming with my friend Baron, so I couldn't run fully what my vision of uh, a promotion that I wanted to run would be. Um, but this, Modern Age Grappling, is exactly the way I want wrestling presented. And um, the people that I believe understand my vision are the people booked on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, just to be clear, Cole Cabana is commentating. I felt like sure. his voice and his, uh, his knowledge of uh, the round system uh, would definitely help out to explain to people what's going on. So I have him on commentary. T with, and Lenny, um, right? Lenny, Lenny. Yes, oh, sir. He's great. Lenny, Lenny. Yeah, he's, he's tremendous. I, I love him. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean <sighs> – the guys that's on the card, of course, they did lose their jobs, of course, uh, you know, with me, with Ring of Honor. Um, and this is just me trying to, you know, put this style of wrestling forward, but also the guys that understand it, uh, that lost their jobs from Ring of Honor, give them a place that hopefully will have eyes watching, you know. So um, that's my goal right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, this is my original idea of uh, my promotion is this one. Rounds based wrestling. Yeah, it says matches will be contest- contested under pro wrestling rules with a twist. They'll be broken up into six rounds of five minute segments with a 30 second break given to the contenders between rounds. Time limits will be strictly adhered to. Is there anybody that you had to sell on this to be like, hey, you've probably, ne-, because there are some of these people who like the idea but maybe have never done it like this before? Uh, no, I didn't have to sell it to anybody. All the guys that I have on the card are. Um, they're ambitious like I am, I sure. believe. So they're they're open to challenges like this. Um, you know, I think they all kind of understand. Uh, I've worked with all of them too, so they kind of understand what I'm looking for mm-hmm. as far as like, you know, the presentation of wrestling. I also think the rounds based system gives uh, each round its own um, its own like life. It gives it its own. Uh, uh, what am I looking for? What's the word I'm looking for? Yeah freaking trying to say his own identity basically sure um you know so from each round you can get like a different feel of wrestling it could be fast paced it could be slow it could be a brawl it's just it could be anything uh so um i'm really interested to see how the live audience really uh digests it we tried it one time at terminus 2 for the pre-show it was uh Aviticus cash who i'm wrestling mm-hmm. and then this um adam priest who's wrestling black bear he's show. great he's great yeah, he's really good. Both of those guys are really good, and they they really like. They really got the 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 match over and the gimmick over. So I'm hoping that it works for uh, entire show. Um, the difference uh, I have with wrestling coming in as a performer is uh, oftentimes we fly in early, call time is really early, and then like the show runs late normally. Yeah. So uh, you're pretty much there all day. I hate that. Yeah. So. Um, what I've always wanted to do, definitely with a smaller show like this, is only run about four or five matches. And, um, you know, hopefully the show is done within an hour. So if fans or the boys want to go to a bar and hang out, they can. They want to see the town, they can. Um, and uh, this is just my way of, like, I don't know, trying to... The Sunday matinee show should be a standard thing. Like, I, I love that. Like. I, I think so, yeah. When I see WDB running live events and I got friends that are like, oh, yeah, the show's at 7, I go, why? Do it at 1. <laughs> like, run, run that why live event in the afternoon or the early evening. It's a Sunday. Why not? Exactly, exactly. Because everybody's got to go to work on Monday. I want to be out too late. Yeah. So uh, this is me experimenting with a lot, um, and I'm hoping that uh, the live audience and the people watching on Fight um, enjoy. So... so uh, Obviously, you were you were pulled from the Impact show. I wanted to ask how you feeling. You're you're back in the ring already, so apparently you're doing all right. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Um, I really appreciate everybody at Impact. Uh, I really appreciated my time there and enjoyed my time there. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to finish. Um, you know, but hopefully, I can come back around and uh, you know work for them again and have a, a better payoff. But uh, yeah, I'm feeling a lot better after concussion. Um, uh, I just had to take some time off. Uh, the good thing is, is I got a chance to learn a little bit more than I knew about concussions. Mm-hmm. So now I can, uh, you know, better avoid them. I can avoid them more going forward. And uh, when they happen, I know uh, what to do immediately. So um, this is all new to me. <laughs> and getting to work even briefly in the same promotion as Jordan, how was that for you? 
It was it was really good. Uh, we normally uh, have this thing where we we we, we mess each other uh, multiple times a day when we're away, but. You know, we got a chance to travel to the show together mm-hmm. uh, by flight, and then we were able to get the rental car together and drive and actually do stuff in town before and after the show. So that was really fun, uh, really fun to do. Um, just seeing her in that environment and how she plans her matches and just uh, the way that people view her in that locker room, I'm just really proud of the rest that she's become. So being able to watch that, you know, up close is really cool. Yeah, I was, I was able to see her work this past weekend in Cincinnati and – in there with Morrissey and Shark Boy, and it it fits right in. Like it's seamless. Yeah. Like she's such yeah. a versatile performer that is like very valuable to that locker room. And I think that's something good that Impact has done. They've retained Josh Alexander, Jordan Grace. They've retained uh, Ace Austin. These people that prove their worth in the company. And I thought that was really great. Uh, speaking of, we got we got a question. It's from somebody. They didn't put their full name. It's a Trisha P. It says, which dog is your favorite? Which dog is my favorite? Why do you have to do that? All of them are my favorite. You By the way, this one. is my wife. Well, uh, Did she who's say that? Say, Did she who's say that? to say? Who's to say? There's, there's so many Trisha P's in the world, right? <laughs> Only one that would know about the dogs. I mean, maybe, I maybe it's somebody just, uh, you never know, right? Completely, but uh, they're they're my children. I can't choose just one. All of them are my favorite. I love all of them equally. What do you like least about each dog? Is she asking these questions? No, this is me. This is me. This is me freestyling here. Okay. Uh, What I like about I I dislike that Barry likes to jump because his his nails are long. Yeah, and he scratches. Um, Bernie is. uh, Oof, she's. uh, she 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 walks to a beat of her own drum. She does whatever she wants to do when she wants to do it, and I, I don't appreciate that. Bert boy is still a puppy, and he still sure. takes little poops around the the bedroom at night. Um, <laughs> I find him in the morning stepping on them, unfortunately. Oh no, um, landmines we call them. Yeah, and um, I guess Blue, which is our new puppy, he uh, he just humps everyone. <laughs> so that's, I, I don't like that. That makes me not feel good. So my God. Uh, we're all hanging out, and he's just like humping one of the dogs, and yeah, it just kind of kills the mood. But yeah, which, that's, that's the only thing. Which modern age grappling performer do you think each one of your dogs would like the most? You mm. can't say you can't say yourself for all of them. That's cheating. Like, which one do you think matches up to their personalities? Each dog matches one of the wrestlers from Modern Age Grappling? Yeah. Mm. Mm. I think Bert would match Will Ferrara because Will is, like, very low-key. Uh, and Bert is, like, major chill. Um, Barry. Who does Barry match? Barry. I would say Titus, but Titus has settled down uh, <laughs> as he's gotten older. Is Barry so, the humper? Uh, no. Uh, the humper is blue, actually. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. The Humper, I would say, is probably Baron. <laughs> Blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Baron hides it well, but he's a Humper. <laughs> Amazing. Um, and then uh, Bernie would be, oof. I don't know Eviticus well, but he seems he seems a bit the same as Bernie, I'd say. Yeah. My time hanging around them. Interesting, interesting. Before we went on the air, I talked to you a little bit about uh, the last time I saw you in person was at the presser after Super Card of Honor, and you're there mm. right next to Tony Khan. Uh, you're, you're talking. I thought it was a great presser. You talked about restoring honor to the championship. Uh, maybe elaborate a little bit on that uh, because I, I thought that your answer was really good. You were like, the, when I felt like this title had honor, these people had it, and you you specified some certain people yes i just um and maybe i'm 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 jaded in a certain way but i just feel like wrestling and i think everyone during their time growing up says this like wrestling isn't the same Mm -hmm. uh as it was when i was growing up and i just i really feel like the way that the ring of honor championship the company uh the combatants in the ring were viewed was a lot different 
when I was coming up in 2005 to about 2000 and, you know, maybe seven or eight, nine. Um, and uh, I just want that aura to the championship to be there again. Um, and I feel the only way to do that is to go out there and wrestle people that view wrestling the way that I do. Um, that's uh, individuals that uphold honor at all costs. I believe uh, they have to believe in the code of honor. And this isn't just, you know, a gimmick. These are people that have to really believe that the ring of honor brand is the way professional wrestling is supposed to be presented. I sure. really feel that way. Um, you know, I, I feel like, you know, I'm not just ring of honor is the only way wrestling should be, but I feel like it is the standard. If you look at every top performer in every company, uh, you know, in the United States, at the least, they've had some kind of presence in ring of honor. When you talk about some more Joe, when you talk about the Briscoes, when you talk about Seth Rollins, you know, uh, the NXT brand for a long time was all top Ring of Honor guys. Yeah. Um, and I believe that there's a reason for that, you know. Um, just the the essence of what Ring of Honor was, a lot of people tried to 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 use it and they, they couldn't, but the guys that somehow came to Ring of Honor, made it to Ring of Honor, made it to the top of the card, they carry on, you know, a piece of Ring of Honor and like the essence of it in all of what they do and they take it to other companies and then they kind of transformed, you know, the WWE style into what Ring of Honor once was, you know. Uh, so the company has just influenced the entire platform, the entire wrestling industry for like the last, what, 15 years, yeah. 12, 15, 20 years. So, I mean, um, I just want to be a part of something like that again. And I think uh, the way I view wrestling and a lot of the guys coming up now, they view wrestling differently like Danielson did and like Joe did. And I think we can do that again. We can change the mold again with the new ring of honor. Yeah. I remember when like Danielson would move from WWE to AEW, you would have those people that probably didn't see his ROH work that are like, Oh, will he still be able to work that style? And I'm like, WWE was a much faster pace than what ROH was when he was there. Like mm -hmm. it was, it was a different style that, that he worked there and you, you really got to watch it to appreciate it. I, I like how you mentioned like restoring honor to that championship because you defended it like 15 times outside of ROH in, in that interim. I know that now probably that's not something you can just do as, as I don't know, as often as you were before because different ownership means different clearances. What has that yeah. me meant for your schedule? Because I mean, I know that you've, it's primarily ROH and AEW now. Yeah. Uh, my schedule with um, the new ring of honor brand is still unclear. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, my independent schedule is now calming down. Um, you know, because I know ring of honor is coming back soon. And I want to have yeah. my availability open for that. So I was working along with, um, you know, WXW progress as well as like spot shows here and there. And um, all of that is coming to a head very soon. And I appreciate my time at these promotions. So, um, yeah, I can't really speak more on that. It's just I have to wait until, uh, you know, things are announced. And I unfortunately learn things like everybody else. Sure. But, I mean, the fact that you're that modern age grappling is happening seems like Tony Khan seems to be pretty cool with that. ROH seems to be pretty cool with that. AEW does. Uh, not only that, but, I mean, you've got people that have regularly appeared on their programming as well. Yeah, um, I've been pretty good with uh, the offices of Impact, uh, Ring of Honor, and AEW um, with using talent. They've been pretty open and not a lot of restrictions. Um, of course, the normal things. Uh, sure. you know, uh, but, um, like Baron, yeah, Baron really can't open. win. That's the main rule that they say. Baron's not exactly. winning at all, ever, even if there's exactly. a fire. <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly that was one of the big ones actually um but yeah yeah it's been really easy they've been really helpful and um i'm, I'm very thankful for um you know them allowing their talent to come and work for us yeah so what do you want people to know about modern age grappling that maybe they wouldn't or any preconceived notions if they see the rule set and maybe it's not for them what would you want to tell them to give them a shot to have them give you a shot rather well, um, I want you to just think about this as uh, not is not just about technical wrestling. A lot of people believe the round system or anything associated with me is strictly that. Um, that is my wheelhouse is what I enjoy. Yeah. But um, I want to just bring something different to the table. I feel like there's a lot of uh, wrestlers out there that don't get opportunities because of the way that they decide to wrestle. And I want to be a platform uh, to give them where they can 
come do what they enjoy. And, um, you know, to me, the round system gives you enough time to digest what you just uh, saw. And then it starts again. Um, also, it's really big for me is uh, heels and faces. It's really difficult now to get heels and faces because uh, the pro wrestling rules aren't being enforced. So with modern age grappling, Normal pro wrestling rules, which you already know with WWE, AEW, Impact, these rules are just going to be reinforced, um, you know, with modern age grappling. There won't be any, uh, you know, lukewarm calling of rules. Everything will be enforced, and um, the referees uh, have that authority to do that. And uh, that's another thing I want to uh, do is uh, give the authority back to the referees. Doing that thus helps build characters of hills and faces, Um so that's pretty much what I'm trying to do here. I want to make it easily digestible for the audience, not adding a lot of rules like I did with Terminus, but just relaxing them a lot more and breaking them up with the six five-minute rounds. Did you ever see the video back in the day of angry PWG fan that would like yell at people? And there was the ref that was in there, and he was like walking through everything, and the, the guy's just like, they know the rules! Like, <laughs> that's how I feel about wrestlers. It's like, why are we warning them? They knew the rules before they got into the ring. They they yes, were they yes. were aware of this. And if they didn't, well that's on them. They should have familiarized themselves with the rules beforehand. Like John Jones was one of my favorite fighters. He's out there headbutting people. I'm like, you you should probably know the rules. You can't use inexperience as, as a thing. You're in the UFC. You can't yeah. do that. You gotta you gotta know the rules. So whenever I see somebody getting warned, I'm like isn't the rule book the warning to begin with? Mm -hmm. Why don't they know? That's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, this is just a place to give guys a platform to uh, do what they enjoy about professional wrestling, not uh, something they feel they're forced to do to uh, keep a booking or get a booking. So a reminder, guys, May twenty second, yeah. six p.m. A nice start time for that at the Underground Fight Factory in Hampton, Georgia. But you can watch it on Fight. We're going to wrap up with some honest-to-God reader questions, like from actual readers. Someone says, would you rather have feet for hands or hands for feet? That one's easy for me. Hands for feet, I guess. Yeah, you could I'd grip. Be a lot more. It'd be so much more versatile to have hands for yeah. feet. Like, without a doubt, sure. what kind of question is that? Uh, I what hang upside down from my feet. Oh, you got it. Who's it? Is that Mr. Hughes ringing the doorbell? <laughs> uh, this is a package. Oh, okay. My got, wife gets a lot of uh, a lot of uh, Amazon packages. I got I got excited there. I was like, oh, Mr. Hughes cameo. Here we go. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I thought. I mean, I know Jordan once told me that like you played a video game with Mr. Hughes, and that's why I thought that. She saw me one time on the phone with Hughes trying to get him to understand how to play. Cause I had just gotten call of duty and yeah. I think he had gotten it too. And I was trying to get him to hook it up and it took a very long time. And we played call of duty like once. And then he forgot how to hook his PlayStation <laughs> up to, to, but I'm like, it should I want you to do it one time is always hooked up, but I guess he did something. Wrong and he called during our interview one time that me and you did with Baron. Like he called yeah. at the start of that. And I think I saw her and I mentioned that I was like, he's buddies with Mr. Hughes that rules. And yeah, she, yeah. She, I think she had mentioned that. Someone asks, who was your go-to in WCW NWO Revenge? Hmm. I'm Maybe a Han, I'm a Hans Oman guy. Like, you remember him? Him and Aki Man? I don't, because I didn't play that game often. I was really? more so on uh, uh, 2000 and uh, okay. the other one. So yeah. who, was, who were your go-tos there? Uh, 2000 was Chris Jericho all the time. All the time. Mr. Whenever Hughes, I played, Mr. Hughes play. would be livid. Jericho fired him. <laughs> look, look at that. Probably. Yeah. Look at that. No respect. <laughs> Reminder, guys, check out Modern Age Gra Grappling, May 22nd, 6 p.m. We got a cameo in the background. What? Trish, you going to come say hey? Oh, she's checking her package. Aw. Oh, what a letdown. You want to say hey? What's this? Replacing that line as much Wrestling oh, superstar yeah. Jordan Grace in the background. I love these cameos. It's good for the thumbnail, you know. Like <laughs> MJF would always run into my interviews and dunk on people, but this one's this one's a positive one. But I mean, she did just try to pit you against your own animals. That is true. I'll talk to her about that uh, when we get off the phone. Okay. 
And who's this guy? We got another run in. It is Mr. It's a ladder. We got a ladder match going on. This is not in the modern age grappling rule set. This is not permitted. Jonathan Gresham. Obviously, you got some stuff going on there. I want to thank you so much for joining me. I'm sure I'm going to talk to you in probably another month or two when you've got something else incredible probably. going on. Uh, let probably. the people know where they can find you. Uh, you can find me on uh, Twitter pretty much at uh, the John Gresham. Mm -hmm. And then you can follow the Terminus brand at uh, Terminus Pro. Um, that would be appreciated. Thank you. Check it out, guys. Uh, they do some incredible stuff. I love what John and uh, Baron are both doing. Until next time, guys, we're out. Jonathan Gresham is the undisputed ROH champion. We got to talk to him, but I want to give you the undisputed best VPN in the world, the fastest VPN in the world. NordVPN.com slash Fightful has that threat protection, blocks online trackers, blocks annoying pop-up ads, and malware. Not only that, you get a great deal. 70% off, an additional month free, and a 30-day money-back guarantee in case you don't like it. You cannot beat that. But you know what? I'm going to. It changes your virtual location with just one click. That way you can remain anonymous or you can check out all your favorite shows earlier. You can subscribe to services cheaper. You can get WWE Network in Canada in case you missed that. You can get UFC pay-per-views much cheaper with overseas services by just changing that virtual location. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. You'll end up paying for the service with the savings you get from it. Check it out, my friends. NordVPN.com slash Fightful.